and welcome to the inside of a Honda Civic Type R, which is our favourite hot hatchback. This is no ordinary Type R. This is not just the 2020 revised one. This is the limited edition, limited to 100 units uh, in the UK, all sold, 200 I think worldwide. It comes with no radio, no air conditioning. It is also lighter because there's less soundproofing in the roof and it has very lightweight 20 inch forged alloy wheels for a 40 kilogram weight loss overall over what is the hot hatchback in the class lead. Now, we thought so for a little while. My colleagues like this car a lot. I like it a great deal. It has won what we call Britain's best affordable driver's car, which is a thing we run every autumn or summer if we can, which means that of slightly affordable cars, there's not actually a price limit per se. This is a 40 grand car in this specification. It is the funnest of the lot. You can find that feature in Autocar Magazine. You good news agents every Wednesday. Also autocar.co.uk. However, this year, it is not all about just this Civic because there is a new car that I will come to in a minute, which costs a not dissimilar amount of money to the Civic. It's a very different kind of car, but this is basically the car it has to beat. If you are spending not an absolute fortune on a sports car, this is the car to go for. So what is it? Well, it starts out life as a Honda Civic, a five door, five seat hatchback. And it's funny, isn't it? If you look at a regular Civic, it's like it's just waiting to have all of these wings and spoilers and everything added. It's like, it's like it was always meant to look like this in the first place. And the standard car just looks weird as a result. Honda adds a two litre turbocharged engine making more than 300 horsepower under the bonnet, a limited slip, mechanical limited slip differential, and a six speed manual gearbox, adaptive dampers, big brakes, lots of red everywhere, brilliant seats, and it has created one of the fastest, one of the most engaging hot hatchbacks in modern times. And there are many things to like about it. The ride is firm and composed and keyed in without being unduly harsh. The steering is terrifically direct and accurate. You get loads of feel back. Also, they just put this fancy rim on, which I'm a big sucker for an Alcantara wheel rim anyway. And it is a great road car, whether you're going particularly quickly or not. It's a really good track car, but also on the road at sensible speeds, you just get loads back. It just feels communicative and responsive and serious, but not dull serious. It's, it feels the closest a hot hatch currently comes to something like a GT Porsche. That's, that's the kind of involvement and engagement but I think it gives back, and I like that very much. But there is a new car too, which on paper promises to be just as exciting. It's not the same kind of car as this, it's smaller, it's not front wheel drive. You would call it more rally replica than a hot hatchback. And it's called the Toyota Yaris GR. And I'll be honest, I'm quite excited about it. So let's hop out of this, reminding myself that it is Un unquestionably the best hot hatch at the moment. It's really just, it's so good. You can just feel the diff hooking up and it just tweaks the steering on the way out of corners to remind you that it's there. It's, it tells you what's going on and that's what I absolutely love about this car. So let's hop out of this into the Toyota and see whether the best affordable-ish driver's car around is still this Honda or not. And so then to the Toyota Yaris GR, the boosty dirty Yaris GR. What is it? Well, it's a Yaris, but it's not just a Yaris because they don't make a three-door Yaris like this, but for World Rally Championship regulations, you're meant to make a car that has a body similar-ish to a road car. So Toyota's rally teams have, well, I mean, ideally would have a three-door. Toyota went, oh, we can't really give you a three-door, can we? And then their engineers said, we can make a three-door car, we? So they, so they did. So this car has to come off the regular Yaris production line from whatever state it is on it and it is widened it is stiffened it doesn't have a torsion beam rear end like a conventional super mini instead there are double wishbones back there and what you don't have to do for wrc regulations but what toyota thought it would do because it would be a laugh is fit wrc style 
running gear. I'm not exactly WRC style running gear. This doesn't have a sequential gearbox or anything like that. But what it does have is a 1.6 litre three cylinder turbocharged engine boosted, very boosted to 257 horsepower. Runs through a six speed manual transmission, snicky manual transmission, which is cool. And it drives all four wheels. And you can vary, should you wish to, the amount of power that goes to the back. So it'll start in normal, you can put it through to sport, which actually pushes uh, the majority of power to the back. Or you go to track, which is about 50-50, which is even. Track pack cars, which cost a little bit more than the standard car, but basically it's what you'd spec, isn't it really? Uh, get limited slip disc front and rear. So this is a proper old school rally replica, not in the way that it needs to be homologated as a rally replica, but think of it as the modern rebirth of an Impreza Turbo, maybe. And that is, as you may have guessed, a great thing. That's a light car, it's not as light as a super mini hot hatchback, unsurprisingly. So it weighs about 1,280 kilos. It's got 18 inch rims with Michelin Cup tyres and it's just an absolute riot. It's really terrifically good fun in a way that, do you remember the old Yaris GRMN? This is not like that car, that was really hard, really focused, really raspy, a proper sort of front wheel drive track car if you like. It's a more rounded car in some ways than, than the Civic. The Civic feels very focused, it's the closest thing to a 911 GT3 that somebody makes in hot hatch world. This isn't really like that, it's got a bit more breadth to its suspension, it's still sort of firm-ish, some sort of sharp vertical movement every now and again. The steering is light and direct and it just feels special, but whereas the Civic feels special at slow speeds, to make this really feel uber special, you've got to be asking a bit more of it. But if you do, oh man, it is seriously, seriously capable and seriously good fun. Body control is so good. There's a little bit of roll and it's quite a quick movement into roll, but then it settles and as you get out back on the power, it's got so much traction, it's got so much grip, it's just, as a way to just dart along a small winding road with good visibility, because this car is small itself, it's just really great fun, really great fun to get involved with and immersed in and just enjoy the amount of ability that it's got. I think it gets better the faster you go. And like all modern cars, the problem with that is that they go too fast. So on roads, you can be limited by visibility, but that is true of pretty much every modern performance car. The thing this has going for it is that it's involving because it's got a manual gearbox and it's little, which lets you make more of the road you're on. And it's not as fast as a supercar, is it? It's not as fast as a 600 to 700 horsepower McLaren. I'm having more fun on the road in this than I would be in, let's say, any new supercar. Question is, am I having more fun than in the Honda? Well, the two, although we've put them against each other, are not the natural rivals to each other. The Civic is, is a bigger car. It has its own common rivals. This car just doesn't really have any, unless you go back to an Impreza Turbo or a Lancia Delta Integrale. It's a very different thing. It is a different car to a focused front drive hot hatchback. What I really like about the Honda is that at slower speeds, as you come into slower things like this, the Honda still gives you lots back. Its gear shift is probably nicer. It steers with a bit more sort of feel and finesse, and it just has a really nice sort of focused feel to it. But this car, I mean, I think you have to be going a bit quicker to get the best out of it, but it feels special all the time. Not about really, really special. And there are not enough cars like this in the world.